Welcome to another Wednesday night class in Hara Lebanon Avenue as the corner of East 9th. Very nice to see all of you back. We are learning Perashat Kedoshim, Le'anun Ishmad Baba Sali, Bab Hayim Vital, and Zvetlana Golda Bat Serah, Zechutam Tagim Ba'adenu. The Perashat starts off by saying, By the Ber Hashem El Moshe Lemor, Hashem speaks to Moshe Rabbeinu and he says, The Ber El Kor Adad Bnei Yisrael, Usually when Moshe Rabbeinu transmitted the teachings of Borei Olam, he would receive it from Hashem, give it to Aharon, Aharon to the Zekenim, Zekenim to all the rest of Am Yisrael. Over here Rashi tells us, Moshe Rabbeinu reversed the order over here. He actually called all of Am Yisrael first. Why would he do that? Says Rashi, Because the majority, the bulk of the commandments of the Torah is included or is located in this perasha. Rashi is quoting a midrash, obviously a sifra. So which means Moshe Rabbeinu or Borei Olam deemed this perasha so important that it was not to be transmitted over. It might, let, might get lost in translation or in transmission. So the best thing is call of all of Am Yisrael and instruct them direct. And what do you have to tell them? Kedoshim to you, you shall be holy. Ki kadosh ani Hashem For I, Borei Olam, your God, am holy. So since I'm holy, I'm instructing you to be holy also. What I understand from here is that if this perasha is named Kedoshim, and right off the bat, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling us to be holy like Him, that means, I think in my opinion, that every commandment in this perasha teaches me how to be holy. That's what I understand. So now let's focus on a commandment. This commandment is brought down in this perasha, of course. Perik. Yotet, the pasuk is pasuk yothet. Says Bore Olam, now remember, Moshe Rabbeinu is saying this direct to Am Yisrael. Lo tikom ve lo titor et bene amecha, ve ahavta l're'acha kamocha, ani Hashem. You shall not take revenge, and you shall not bear a grudge against the members of your people. You shall love your fellow as yourself, I am Hashem. Yes, this is very near and dear to my heart, this topic. We won't talk about the topic of taking revenge and holding a grudge, bearing a grudge. We shall talk about the topic of kamocha, loving your friend like you love yourself. Obviously, of course, because it's very important now to speak about it in the days of Sifirat Omer, where the Tamidim of Rabbi Akiba perished because they did not respect one another. And it's incumbent upon us to show the respect towards one another, if we want to somehow rectify or to atone for the sin of the Talmidim of Rabbi Akiba. So with that being said, let's see a little, a few mefarshim, a few commentaries, what this pasuk means. Again, we're focusing on, Hashem. You have to love your friend like you love yourself. See, I saw many... Um, English translations, they translate it to be, you shall love, to translate it to be, you shall love your fellow neighbor like you love yourself. It doesn't have to be my neighbor. Why does he have to be living in my vicinity or somebody that I know? No. They have talere acha. And what I do understand from this pasuk is that if Borei Olam, if God is calling him my friend, that means they're all, we're all friends even before we love each other. It means it's not the love that I love him turns him to be my friend. You have to know from the beginning he's your friend. And because he's your friend, you have to love him. Hashem could have wrote, Ve'ehabta yehudi kamocha. You have to love another Jew. It doesn't say that. Ve'ehabta l'ra'acha. Which means I understand that automatically he's my friend. Without even knowing him, all of Am Yisrael are friends. Not neighbors. All of Am Yisrael are friends. Says Rashi on this pasuk, Amar bi'akiba. So according to the Bi Akiba, which we'll talk about him towards the middle of the class, according to the Bi Akiba, this is 
one of the fundamentals of Judaism, of the Torah at least. This ve'ahabtale hakam mocha. Okay. Next, the Ibn Ezra says, why do you have to love your friend like you love yourself? He says, Ki'ani elowa ehad barati etchem. Like I mentioned yesterday in the Tuzanat Halakha about the Sidurim, if you remember what I said, because I am one God that created all of you. So there is no difference between where you come from, what you wear, what you eat, what, how you speak. You're all one. Sefer Hinuch, Mitzvah Resh Mem Gimel. Now, Sefer Hinuch is an explanation of the commandments, of the Mitzvot. He says, Mitzvah Ahabat Israel. You have to love everyone in Am Israel. Love everyone in Am Israel. Truly love them in your soul. Kelomar, which means, What he's basically saying is that when's the last time you went to Moishis or to a, soup, to a kosher supermarket and you saw something on the floor and you put it back on the shelf? Good. Baruch Hashem. Why? Because you care for the money that if Hasbi Shalom is on the floor, somebody might come and step on it, and Moishis or whatever supermarket it is, a kosher supermarket, might lose money. So therefore, you care about the money of others. Why? Because if it happened to you, you would want people to care about your money. So basically, everything falls under the umbrella of the Ahabta Lerachakamocha. Caring, everything is under the umbrella of the Ahabta Lerachakamocha. Care for him like you would care for yourself. Care about his money, like you would care for your own money. Rambam. It's a mitzvah on every Yehudi to love his friend like he loves himself. Basically the same thing. In fact, I saw from the Bishayahu Pinto, Shlita, he says, you know, we wait for Sukkot, for the Arba Minim, for the Sukkah, we wait for Pesach, for the Matzah, for the Sipuris at Misraim. We wait for different holidays, for example, Rosh Shana, for the Shofar. And these are mitzvot we wait for. You have a mitzvah every single second of the day. You don't have to wait for it. If you say in your mind, you just think about it, I love every Jew like I love myself, then you get the mitzvah. It, it's, it's continuous. It, it keeps on going. You don't have to wait. There's no, uh, there's no times during the year. Whenever you think about it, you get a mitzvah. Says the Rambam. Therefore, you speak in high regards in everybody that you meet. And care for his money. Same thing like the Sefer Hinuch. Like you care about your own money. You want people to honor you, honor your friend. And if you rejoice when you see people being disgraced, a Yehudi, this is a very strong statement from the Rambam. Very strong statement. One that does not care or that rejoices in the dishonor of his friend has no portion in the world to come. Baal Shem Tov, we get to the Hasidut aspect right now. Baal Shem Tov says, what does it mean? You have to love your friend like you love yourself, says the Baal Shem Tov. The way you treat your friend, and you love them, and you honor them. Hashem. Hashem mirrors your actions. So he has like a little twist on it. He says, the way you love your friend is the way I love you. You honor your friend, I honor you. You care about your friend's money, I care about your money, and therefore I will give you more money. He says, what is it like in two? A pasuk we say in Tehillim every single day. Hashem tzilecha, al yad Hashem is your shadow. Now a shadow, if I move my hand right, it will only move right. It doesn't do the opposite. Same thing, Borei Olam. The way you act towards people, the way he acts towards you, he mirrors your actions. He says, just like the shadow. What you do, the shadow does. This is what God does. Now you understand the Pasuk in a different light. You know why you have to love your friend? 
Because I am like you, says Hashem, and what you do, I will do. Fine. So now we get into the Kabbalistic portion. He says, When you sit in Bet Knesset, in Shul, before you start praying the morning prayer, just say that. I am right now uh, accepting upon myself the mitzvah of Ve'ahabtar Akamocha. Now, it's very lengthy, but in short, why is he saying that? Because I know my tefillah is not 100%. But somebody in the kahal might have a tefillah 100%. Now, I want my tefillah to go up with his tefillah. I don't want a half-baked tefillah to go up. I don't want a 30% tefillah to go up. I want a 100% tefillah to go up. So the only way it will go up is if you love him like you love yourself, he becomes you, his 100% becomes your 100%, you go up. And by the way, this is not only shahrit. Every time you're in shul, take a few seconds. I am right now mechaven. This is a mitzvah ase. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a mitzvah ase. It's a positive commandment. Like a positive commandment to waste a seat when you have four corners. Like a positive commandment to keep Shabbat. Like a positive commandment to honor your father and your mother and your elders. This is a positive commandment. Okay. With that being said, we're going to bring a Gemara. Baruch Hashem, you're all fluent in this Gemara. You know this Gemara already. But we have to bring it because of the lesson that we will expand on. Gemara Masechet Shabbat Lamed Aleph. Ma'aseh begoy ehad sheba lifne shamay. If you know what we're talking about, we have two elders, Shamay and Hillel. Not Bet Shamay, Bet Hillel. They were actually the Shamay and Hillel. Bet Shammai, Bet Hillel means the students of Shammai and Hillel. We're actually talking about them. Shammai and Hillel. There was a person, a uh, Gentile, came over to Shammai. Why? He wants to convert. Amar lo, so he tells him, Gayereni al menat shetalamedeni kol ha-Torah kula keshe'ani omed al regel ahat. I want to be like a flamingo right now. I want to stand on one leg and I want you to give me instant conversion. Don't give me all the stories of the Torah. I'm not interested in so many details. I'm not even interested in the laws. Give me something quick, quick conversion, and that's it. I'm standing on one foot, which means express. Now, it literally means that Shammai was a contractor. And he had beams over there, so he took the beam and he hit him with the beam. I mean, there's no such thing. You can't, there's no instant conversion. You know, even in people that convert, I know converts that sad to say, but they know more Torah than a regular Jew. Why? Because they put them in a very rigorous process. They have to learn a lot. Afterwards, they have to go to the mikveh. It's very hard. So Shammai tells him, what? Well, you want to, inst there's no instant conversion. He shoes them away. That's the literal meaning. But... It means he just told him leave. There's no such thing. He didn't hit him. He just told him leave. Okay. So if Shammai is not going to help me, I'll go to Hillel. Ba'alifne Hillel, gaire. He comes to Hillel. Hillel tells him, fine. I'll give you one sentence. This one sentence is your ticket to conversion. Amar lo, so Hillel tells him, De'alach sane, le'havrach la ta'abed. What you hate to be done towards you, don't do it to your friend. Which means, first of all in Aramaic, and he flipped the order around. He didn't tell him, love your friend like you love yourself in a positive. He told him in a negative. What you don't like to be done to you, don't do it to your friend. We'll explain why he told him the shlili, the negative. And he tells him, Zohi kola Torah kula. This is the whole Torah. Uh, just let's stop before we continue. We know that Rabbi Akiva was a descendant from Hillel, or at least a student of Hillel. So if Rabbi Akiva tells us that the whole Torah is where did he get it from? He got it from Hillel. So the, the Gentile tells him, that's it? What, I don't want to be done to, towards me. I shouldn't be, that's it? He tells him, I'm just starting you off. But after you know this code, 
Then go learn the rest of the Torah. And he accepted and he converted. Over there, the Shabbat brings around like six, seven stories with Ma'aseh, Bagoy, that wanted it, Gayet, different stories. Okay. Now that we got the story, let's analyze the story. Sefer Dibre Shaul, he asks, Lama Amar lo bilashon shedila ve lo bederech hiyub? Why not tell him just straight out, Ve ahapta lere'acha kamocha? He tells him, what you don't like to be done towards you, don't do it to your friend. Why not just tell him, love your friend like you love yourself? He says, Lo amar ve ahapta lere'acha kamocha, why? He says, because, now I'm not getting into... Uh, politically correct or politically incorrect or whatever the term is. But in short, what he's saying is Gentiles cannot understand the concept of loving your friend like you love yourself. They understand the negative. They understand the reverse. Or don't do to your friend what you don't want to be done to you. That they understand. But the positive they don't understand. And over here we're talking about a goy, a Gentile. So therefore he says, if I tell him, what, what does that mean? I, what, I have to love my friend? I can love myself? Of course not. So therefore, he, he flips it around. He says, don't do to your friend what you want to be done to you. He understands that. He says like this. He says, Everybody understands that. In fact, we understand that easier than At least to me, I don't know about you, but at least to me, it's easier to keep don't do negative to your friend because you don't want negative to be done to you. That, okay, fine. But you want me to love my friend like I love myself? First of all, who says I love myself? What if I don't love myself? Well, you have such a low esteem. What, what if I don't love myself? So how am I supposed to keep this mitzvah? We won't address that tonight, but just think about that. What if I don't love myself? So how am I supposed to keep, love the other one? And also, let's say I do love myself. How, how am I? That means if every single holiday... I am to go buy a nice white shirt. I have to buy a white shirt for every single Yehudi. If I have to love my fellow Jew, did you ever think about this? If I have to love my, uh, my fellow Jew like I love myself, now I love myself. Before the holiday, I buy a nice white shirt. That means every single Yehudi around the world, I must send them a white shirt? How do I fulfill this mitzvah? So therefore, Hillel knows not to tell him that. He tells him, what you don't want to be done to you, don't do it to yourself, fine. If you had a grocery store, you don't want things to be on the floor, we'll go back to that example, right? Okay, so make sure you pick up things from the, from the floor, fine. That's the Debre Shaul. We continue. Now we'll go into something even deeper. It says over here that Magid, Magid of Mezrich, what does that mean that the Gentile asked him, convert me while I'm standing on one leg? Is it literal? Is he really standing on one leg? And what does that mean? So he explains like this. Now this is the topic I would like to address tonight. True, we talked about in many different contexts. Yes, I understand. But this is the first time I saw this. And I felt that it spoke to me. And I hope it speaks to you. Because this might answer... Why you go through things in life? There is a Gemara, Masechet Pesachim, Pezayin Amud Bet. Says the Gemara, the only reason why God dispersed us around the world and spread us to so many different countries is because wherever we are, we pick up converts. I won't get into the issue with the edict. We don't accept converts. I'm just saying what it is. Kehat Sadiq, Rotseli Yod, Bemadrega, Shelot Hamid. Nobody likes ups and downs. Everybody wants a good day. Nobody wants one day it's good, one day it's not, one day I sold, one day I made money, one day I didn't. I don't want that. I want on one leg means always the same thing. Regal ahat means my whole life, one smooth ride. That's what I want. It's easy for me to serve God when everything's going well in my life. When I don't have problems, I can wake up in the morning. When I don't have problems, my wife is not nagging, and my kids go to sleep on time, and they finish their homework, and everything's good, I could go to class. I want that. So if that's the case, what, God doesn't know that? God doesn't want to give us a good life? 
So why does he make us fall sometimes? Why does he give us bad days? This is a deep concept, but not so deep. There's something called nitsotzim, something called kilipot. As you know, unfortunately, it's a lifelong battle between the good side and the dark side. There, is a dark, there are dark forces in the world. Whether we see them or not, whether we believe in them or not, makes no difference. But there are dark sides. There is a dark side in the world, which means the evil inclination and all his posse. Now, they try to take our mitzvot to their side and live off of, live off of it. So what happens sometimes is that people fall because at the moment that they fall, when they get back up from that fall, not only do they pick themselves up, but everybody around them. I'll say it again. You know, there is a story in Masechet Berachot. I don't know the page. Probably in the beginning of the first Perik, or probably not. It's Masechet Berachot. Rabbanu Hanan ben Zakai. So on his deathbed, his students asked him, hey, give us a beracha. So he gives them a beracha, but then he tells them like this. I see in front of me two roads. One leading to Gehinnam, and one leading to Gan Eden. And I don't know which road I will be led on. Okay, we're talking about probably the greatest rabbi in Jewry. The one that established Yevne. The one that without him, we wouldn't be here today. And he's worried. Now, I don't know whether they're going to take me to Gehinnam or Gan Eden. Rabbi, are you kidding? If you don't know, how am I supposed to know? You don't know which road they're going to take you on? Of course you know. So what's the deep answer? He knows he's going to Gan Eden. That's for sure. But the Zohar Akado says, not to frighten you or anything, but every single person before... Whoa, 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 whoa. One second. He didn't say that. He didn't say anything. Every single person, before they go to Gan Eden, they must pass Gehinnam. Not go to Gehinnam. They must pass Gehinnam. Why? Because you're so kadosh. You're so holy. You're going to Gan Eden. You have to pass by Gehinnam to pick up some neshamot from Gehinnam and take them with you to Gan Eden. Says Rabban Yohanan bin Zakai, I know they want me to do that, but I'm terrified. I don't want to be scorched. I don't want to be burnt from the, burnt from the fires of the Gehinnam. So I don't know which way they're going to lead me, but in the end of the day, everybody has to go. Says the Magid, you know why sometimes you fall? Because when you fall and you get back up, you're able to lift other people also. That is the definition of the Ahabta Le'acha Kamocha. Before we continue, you like seeing your friends not religious? Your childhood friends that you were with the whole time. Baruch Hashem, you advance. You like seeing them not religious? Would you like people not taking care of you when you're not religious? Just leaving you by the wayside? Of course you don't. So you know why you fall sometimes? To be reminded. Oh, you were such on a high level. Now fall. You know why? Because look at the, look everybody around you. They also fell. Why don't you pick him up? When you get back up, pick him also back up. He says like this. But Shammai tells him like this. Shammai tells him, excuse me, you want to only have good days? No, no, no. He says, So we said he hit him with the beam, right? You know what binyan means? The way the world is. The binyan of the ulam. The way the world is. The world has darkness and light. Shammai tells him, you have to go through the darkness and the light. There's no unregular hat. He kisses him away. He shoes him away. But Hillel tells him like this. Hillel tells him, I just want to tell you one thing. He says, Hillel, really, up until now, we're, we're understanding, at least this is the way I understood it my whole life, that there are two different opinions, two different views. In the end of the day, Hillel and Shammai are saying the same thing. But Hillel is saying something, just tweaking a little bit. Hillel is telling him, Why'd you, who told you to come over here? What, what, what brought you here? Why, why all of a sudden you want to come convert? 
You know why all of a sudden you want to come convert? Because there is a Sadiq that you don't know about and he had a bad day and he fell. And when that Sadiq got up again, it put some thoughts in your mind to do Teshubah. And that's what Hillel is telling him. What you don't like to be done to you, don't do to others. Which means, you want that if that guy fell and he got up, he wouldn't pick you up? You wouldn't want that. You want him to pick you up, so you too also same thing. You know why you fall sometimes in life? Because when you get up, you also pick other people up with you. I hope I'm making myself clear. Which means this gives me great hope. Why do I have bad days in my life? Why sometimes things don't go the way I want? Because Borei HaOlam understands the minute that I fall and then I get back up. Because every time we get back up, we're helping others get back up also. People see us, wow, after a great fall like him, he was able to pick up the pieces and get back up. I could do it also. That's what Hillel is telling him. That's why Borei HaOlam tells you to fall. Therefore, I, Hillel didn't convert him on one leg. Doesn't say that Hillel converted him on one leg. Because Hillel also was like Shammai, that you have to have good days and bad days. But Hillel explained to him why you have to have good days and bad days. That's the Magid of Mezrich. There is a saying in the Zohar that goes like this. Let nehora ela migo hashocha. You don't appreciate the light unless you go through the darkness. And that's very true. That is very true. We don't appreciate how good we have it in life until we're stripped from everything we have. You know, Monday was Yom HaShu'ah. So they brought a speaker, a Holocaust survivor to school, to yeshiva, to address the children. I mean, just, just everything that she was describing and the miracles that happened to her. And so, so one of the questions they asked her, the panel, in the end, how do you keep on believing in God after everything that's going on? She was, everything that happened to me, I realized it was the hand of God. Which means, and she was in the darkest places. We should never even taste or understand point percent of what she went through. I mean, but to the darkness, look, Baruch Hashim says, she has 120 grand, great grand, what mashallah, I don't even know how many it is. But she gave us hizuk, unbelievable hizuk. And sometimes you can only get the best hizuk when you meet people that, uh, unfortunately, when I told you the story yesterday with the guy that was in the wheelchair, they shot him in his back. And he gave, I went as if to give him a hizuk, but he gave me the biggest hizuk of my life. Unbelievable. He's describing to me what Mizmor, the minute it happened to him, he opened up Mizmor Mem Aleph. Mizmor Mem Aleph explains everything. Hashem will save you in a bad day, everything will be good. He had so much imuna. We could only sometimes appreciate what we have when other people fall. That's what Hillel is telling him. You only appreciate the light when you have to go through the darkness. Because when you go through the darkness and you go get back into the light, you bring up everybody with you also. You know, we have a pasuk. This pasuk, I believe, is in Yeshayahu. It says about the Malachim, Veraglehem regel yeshara. Now, if I were to ask you, how many legs do Malachim have? You will probably tell me one. Wrong. They have two legs. However, they do not have knees. So therefore, they cannot walk. They're always bouncing, jumping, jumping up and down, from place to place. They're connected. And we learn from there because their legs are straight, symmetrical. We also have to be straight legs when we have the Amidah. We learn a lot of halakhot from that. So why, 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 why Hashem can't make Malachim with knees? He can't make them like human beings? Because a Malach is not Mehalech. A Malach is Omid. Which means a Malach is status quo his whole life. He's born with one mission and he stays with that one mission until the mission is terminated and he's terminated. That's the way it is. He's always Omid. Us, on the other hand, we're Olech. We have ups and downs. We fall, we get back up. Life is a roller coaster. You know what's that famous song? Life is a highway. Life is a highway. Sometimes you miss your exit, sometimes you, there's detours. This is life. Ups and downs. That's what he is telling him. Fine. With this being said, we go to the Yehudi Hakadosh from Peshisha. He explains the Gemara like this. 
There is a Gemara in Masechet Sukkah, Nun Gimel Amud Aleph. Amar Rabbi Yoshua ben Hanina, Besha'at Simhat Bet Ha-Sho'eva, Lo Ra'inu Shena Be'aynenu. Now, Be'azat Hashem, we should all merit to see the Bet HaMikdash very soon. There is something called Simhat Bet Ha-Sho'eva, which means the libation of the waters on Sukkot. Every day, with every Korban, they libate or they spill wine. However, on Sukkot, with every Korban, water, and they have a great feast, water galore, jugglers, fire, uh, unbelievable. Inshallah, Ba'azat Hashem, we should see it. I want to see fire. Imagine, you get to see a person juggling fire for free. Free. Now, if you want to get a person to juggle fire, you have to get somebody to your birthday party for your children. Over there, it's free. Everybody goes, and what does Rabbi Yoshua ben Hayna say? It was such an amazing event, we didn't sleep. The Gemara asks, what do you mean he didn't sleep? We have a rule that if a person says, I have a nadir, I want to make a vow, I won't sleep for three days, we whip him lashes. Why? You have to sleep. What does that mean? You have to sleep. People have to sleep. You know what a zombie you are if you don't sleep for one day? Imagine three days. It's got, I make a nadir, I, wanna, I don't want to sleep for three days. We, 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 we give him a kut. We give him lashes. So what does the B.O. Shu'ab and Hayna telling us? The whole time, Simhat bin Tushayba was the seven days of Sukkot. We didn't sleep at all. You didn't sleep at all. You had to sleep. So the Gemara answers, no, no, no. They slept, but they slept on the shoulders of one another. And the question is, the same question. Make up your mind. Did you sleep or you didn't sleep? You told me we didn't sleep. Then the Gemara says, what do you mean you don't sleep? You had to sleep. No, no, no. We did sleep, but we slept on the shoulders of... So did you sleep? Well, you didn't sleep. Make up your mind. So the Yehudiya Kadosh explains it like this. He says, sleep is another way of saying darkness in your life. You know how many times we should never know, but when you get depressed, all you want to do is sleep. That's all you... I don't want to see anybody. I shut my phone. I don't want to talk to anybody. No messages. All I want to do is sleep. Wake me up in December. That's also a song. Remember that song? Green Day, wake me up in December. Wake me up in December. At least somebody knows what I'm talking about. I know uh, all of you guys are uh, pop music, but we we were in the 90s with good, good music. Anyway, so wake me up, I don't know. So sleep is another way of saying darkness in my life. So he explains like this. He says, Shikol ehad b'sha'an she'irgish she'eno yachol od le'ahzik et ha'mohin shelo when I had a hard time in my life and this is not only Simhat Bet HaShu'eva, it's a lesson for life. Every single time I feel that I can't go on anymore, all I want to do is sleep, because there's so many problems in my life and so much darkness. You know what you need? You need friends. The only way you will come out of the sleep and slumber is with friends. And that's what it means. We slept on the shoulders of one another, which means when we felt depressed, come, come, come. Put your shoulder over here. It's okay. Lean your head on my shoulder. That's another song. Put your head on my, on my shoulder. See, where's Michael Maxwell? Michael Maxwell doesn't feel uh, well. Uh, we wish him a for Asha Ma'abi Azat Hashem and he should be Bari uh, Etan uh, to come back to class. But he appreciates the, the culture segments. We didn't have culture segments in a long time. Now, Baruch Hashem, we had three back to back to back. Okay. So put your head on my shoulder. You, you need support. You need support. This is what it means. Paul Anka, that's his name. You know why you need friends? You know why you have to love him? Because when you're down, who's going to lift you up? That's what Rabbi Akiba is telling us. When you are down, who will lift you up? So which means if you don't make friends, you will be alone in the world. Therefore, don't discriminate. Everyone be friends with everyone. Accept everyone. Because you never know when you need them. You never know when you will be down. And then they will get up and bring you also with them up. Fine. I saw something beautiful over here in the Sefer Emunat Itecha. He says like this. We have a mahloket between Ben Azai and Rabbi Akiva. Two friends, 
when asked what is the fundamental of the Torah, they each gave their own answer. What Rabbi Akiba, we already said, the fundamental is the Abtara Hakamocha. Ben Azai says like this. Ze sefer toledot adam. What Ben Azai is telling us, you have to procreate. You have to bring kids into the world. So they ask Ben Azai, Yesh, he says like this. One that doesn't want to bring children into the world, it's like he's spilling blood. Why? Because the only reason why you get married, there's no misvah to get married. You know that, right? There's no misvah to get married. There's no misvah to have children. The only way to have children is to get married. So, so Ben Azai says, you have to bring children into the world. So they told Ben Azai, you're funny. Why? You're not married. You know, I love people that give marriage advice that are single. What are you giving me marriage advice for? Bimit, giving me marriage advice, how to find my shidduch, and they're single themselves. Stop the baloney, okay? When you get married and you find your own shidduch, then give me advice. But so as long as you're single, don't tell me how to find my shidduch. Uh, who, who takes these people seriously? So Ben Azai, same thing. Oh, Ben Azai, oh, you're telling us that we have to have children? You're not married. Why aren't you married? Why don't you have children yourself? So Ben Azai tells them like this. Ma'aseh. I can't. I, 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 I can't get myself to get married and have children because then I'll be busy with the wife and the children. And I love learning Torah. You can't detach me from learning Torah. So I have to learn Torah. But they asked him again. But there is a mitzvah in the Torah to have children. You are missing that mitzvah. What do you do about that? He says like this. Sarich kol ehad mi Israel. We all have to keep the 613 mitzvot. There's no excuses. Ah, but what? I'm not a Kohen. I'm not Israel to have a pidyon at bin. There's mitzvot that I can't keep. Right? So how do I keep all 613? Bless you. He says like this. V'imyesh mitzvot, bless you. V'imyesh mitzvot she'en b'yechotam nekayemam b'fo'al. There are mitzvot you can actually do. Yekayemam b'dibur aledeh halimud b'anyan mitzvah. Learn about the mitzvah. For example, you're not a Israel. Your wife's not a Israel. You had the firstborn a girl, so you don't have a pidyon. So how do you keep the mitzvah of pidyon? Learn about the halakha of pidyon. Boom, you got it. You learn about the halakha, you fulfill the halakha. Or, that's one. Or, ziruz aherim mitzvah. By me telling other people and teaching other people to fulfill the mitzvah, boom, it's as if I got it. So what's Ben Azai saying? I don't have to get married. If I teach people to have children, it's as if I have children, good. But you would be Akiba saying, I don't disagree with you because I'm also the Kamocha. When I love my friend like I love myself and I teach him things that I can do myself and we love each other, what he does is me. We're on the same page. Up until now, we're thinking, no, the same exact opinion, just in different ways to explain it. Ben Azai is saying, you're right, I don't have children. But at the moment that I teach people to have children, it's as if I have children. He says, he says over here in the seven, it's said in the holy books, Beshem Tzaddikim al Ora Hayim Kadosh. Yara Brayh Hayim Ben Atar, Ora Hayim Kadosh, unbelievable commentary. Lo Hayalo Eladim. He did not have any children. Why? Because through learning the Torah, he put his whole energy into this commentary. And those are his children. The commentary is his child. And by the way, they will ask the first question they'll ask a person after 120 years, or one of the first questions, did you have kids? Now, let's stop for a second. We should never know. A person that can't have kids, what does he do? So there's a solution. Either Ben Azai teach people about the mitzvah or something better. Learn about the mitzvah of having kids. Or teach people and make them your students. The students become your children. Unbelievable. There's always a way out. So what he's saying over here, The Torah is his children. And then he continues like this. The Amru Hazal and the rabbis tell us, Moshe and Aharon hayu shekulim. Moshe and Aharon were on the same level. How could that be? How could that be? 
not to take away from Aharon Kohen, but Moshe Rabbeinu was the Navi. Lo kam be Israel ki Moshe. Pe'el pe'ad aberbo. And you want to equate him with Aharon? How could that be? So he says, he says, she'av bevadai gadla madregat Moshe madregat Aharon. For sure Moshe Rabbeinu was on a higher level. However, aval kavanatan, what do the rabbis mean when they were the same level? Adarkeha aboda shalahim. The way they served God. Moshe Rabbeinu ahaz ba'ahavat ha-Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu taught Torah, loved Torah, brought us down the Torah. Ve'aron ha-Kohen ahaz ba'ahavat Israel. Do you hear this? And Aharon ha-Kohen, he made sure that everybody loves each other. So which means what he's saying, when you love each other, it's as if you're teaching Torah. Teaching Torah is as if you love one another. There we go. Same level. But it continues like this. Ve'aikar hu a'anyan shel ahabat Yisrael. Loving your Jews. She'af she'kol kehila yesh la derech b'fnei atzma. Even though every shul has their own way. Come to the shul, the tefillah is different than you go to other places. Lo yedame ha'adam she'rak darko hi anechona. It bothers me so much when people walk into the shul and start arguing about what this shul does. This is the way this shul is run. Your shul might be run like this. I understand. For example, class example tonight. Rosh Chodesh. Chodesh Tov, by the way. Shamis and Lebanese say Barachin of on the second night of Rosh Chodesh. Halabis don't. Does well, that mean we're wrong? That means they're right. Doesn't mean they're wrong. Doesn't mean we're right. It means everybody has their own minhagim. So don't, don't come knock my minhag. Don't walk into my shul. Not me, I'm saying, don't walk in my shoe and then knock my minhag. You're right, you have your own minhagim. Stay to your own minhagim. He says, Ela shekol echad lefi shoresh nafsho yesh do derech umanik venusach mishelo. Your neshama comes from a different place in the world, in, in heaven. It's different. Abad sarich leit ahed im kol Yisrael. But you have to all combine together, all join together. Why? The entrance of the Beit HaMikdash had 12 gates. You come from Shevet Reuben, over here. Shevet Levi, over here. But in the end of the day, Twelve different gates, but in the end of the day, it's one Beit HaMikdash. You can have your own customs. I don't care. You could eat certain foods. I don't care. You could have a shrimo. You could have peot. You could have the long coat. You could have a hat. I don't care. Why? The end of the day, like we started off. Who said this when we started off? The Ibn Ezra. I created all of you. One God, not a God for the Ashkenazim and a God for the Moroccans and a God for the... One God. This is the Sefer Mordechai. Beautiful piece he brings over here. Fine. We continue. I saw a person by the name of Harry Redner. I have no idea who he is. But I saw, he says it, I guess. Yeah, I guess he wrote an article or a book. Harry, Harry Redner puts it in ethical life. That's what it's called, ethical life. Morality is the ethic of love. The initial and most basic principle of morality is clearly stated in the Torah. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. See, we got the neighbor again. As thyself. He adds, this Harry Redner, the biblical love of one's neighbor is a very special form of love, a unique development of the Judaic religion and unlike any to be encountered outside it. You understand over here why he told him eh, what you don't like to be done to you don't do it to others. Why? Because it's Gentile. He doesn't understand that. Only Yehudim understand the Ahabtal Re'acha Kamocha. That's what Mr. Harry Redner is telling us over here. Rab Zusha, this is an unbelievable story. Rab Zusha was known to be a very poor person. Very poor person. He once, Baruch Hashem, got a donation of 10, maybe a shekel, let's say $10. Okay. Five and five. That's how it came. Five dollar bill. And five dollar bill. Now, he's worried that they'll steal the money. So he opens up a Tanakh. And he takes the five and five and puts it on the Pasuk Lotignov. 
don't steal. He puts it on the side for the next day for him to come and take the money. What happens is in the middle of the night, a ganav came, a robber came. He took the five from Notignov, put the other five by the pasuk, ve'ehabtara hakamocha. You have to love your friend like you love yourself. So Rab Zusha comes the next day and he sees Lotiknov doesn't have anything. There's only five by the Ahabtaha And he says, Unbelievable. The robber kept the Mizvah better than me. At least he left me money. I don't leave money for anybody. That's the way that he thought about it. You see? That's the way he thought about it. You have to love everyone. I'm not saying, I'm not saying now he should have gave him the money. But just the concept of loving everybody like you love yourself. Says it the Bereyo El. Unbelievable. He says, and this is the first time I'm seeing, I, I, I really should read it to see where he quotes it from. But we know, how many lanes did it have? 12 lanes. Just like the Beit HaMikdash, Reuven, Shem'on, Levi. Says it was 600,000 lanes. Unbelievable, though. 600,000, they don't show you that in the movie. 600,000 lanes. Every single person went through his own lane. He says, why? Why? Because Am Yisrael became like Ma'achim. Because I'm going through the water right now and I want to serve God the way I want to serve Him. And if I'm together with another person, He might confuse me. Right? If you are Sephardi, go and pray with the Ashkenazim. The Ashkenazim ba'arbit, now we have a hazan, the whole arbit, the hazan says it out loud. The Ashkenazim don't say the whole, the whole tefillah out loud. You only hear them, shemel kechem emet. What happened over here? Then, yiru a'inin wa al-bin. Ga'ali said, amin. What happened? Then the Kaddish. What happened? So I want to serve God the way I want to serve God, but some people around me will confuse me. So therefore God, Hashem makes a separate lane for every single person. Wait. So we have a separate lane for every single person, but in the end of the day, what does it say? As Yashir Moshe, Ubne Israel, at one song. Yes, even though you have your own way of serving God, bless you. Even though you have your own way of serving God, but at the end of the day, you're all one. You're all saying the same song. That's what he's saying. Rabbi Sayyid of Salant, Allah Shalom, he says, How careful we have to be with Ve'abta He brings it about Silihot. He says, In Silihot time, you wake up early in the morning, right? But because you wake up early in the morning, you put the alarm clock, and the alarm clock wakes up the whole house. And then, it's not like today where we have faucets and we have plenty of water. You had to use your whole water that your wife went yesterday for the whole house, but you had to take the whole, all the water to do the daim. So you obviously didn't care about your wife and the rest of the household. Fine. And then you put the light on because you have to find your clothes, so obviously you don't care about the people sleeping. Fine. And then when you leave, you slam the door. Why? This is all because... You have to wake up early in the morning And then you get to shul to bet Knesset, You put your talit on When you're putting your talit The fringes of the talit Knock the guy in his eyes But that you don't care about Why? Because listen I have to come close to God Coming close to God also means Or doesn't also mean Means caring about the other person Not to slight them Rab David Shalom Naki brings a story like this He says, You know, Shobabim were the weeks from Shemot to Mishpatim where people fast. There was a Jew that mithazek, you know, one of those. They're making in my shoe something called Ta'anid Dibur. Aside from not eating, but not speaking. Ta'anid Dibur, not speaking at all. His wife is going crazy. He's not talking to the kids. He's not talking to me. Why? I can't speak. So the rabbi answers him back. Let me tell you something, my friend. To hurt another Jew, to hurt another person, is Isur Gamur. Of course, not speaking or not speaking idle chatter, forget about shul, in general, it's not good. 
אם כן, בוודאי שאינך רשאי לצער אותם בשביל זה. וכי בזמן שאתה בבית ומתייחס לאשתך יפה, ומפרגן לה כמה מילים טובות על הדגים ועל החמים, או עונה לילדים כפי הצורך, וכי יש בזו בעיה? You're right, you don't want to speak. לשן הרע, idle chatter. I understand that. But it's going to kill you if you say Shabbat Shalom to your wife. It's going to kill you if you give her some compliments. The food was so good. Thank you so much. You worked like a, sorry for saying, like a dog the whole week. Sorry for using that expression. You worked so hard to bring Saudat Shabbat, and all of a sudden you want to do Ta'ani Dibur on the expense of your wife and your children? He says, אם אתה עושה ככה, אתה מקיים מצוות עשה מן התורה ואהבת לרעך כמוך. If you say a nice word to her, you're fulfilling a מצווה to love your friend like you love yourself. You don't want people to give you compliments. וכי בתענית דיבור, לא צריך אדם לומר לחברו שלום ובוקר טוב? In תענית דיבור, what you don't, you're not supposed to say good morning, בוקר טוב. And I'd like to end off with this. I know we're running out of time. So I'd like to end off with this. You know, what does it mean, Ve'ahabta l'ra'acha kamocha ani Hashem? Now Hashem's name is spelled Yod, and then we have Ehe. I can't say it together, I have to say. We have a Yod, and then we have Ehe, and then we have a Vav, and then we have Ehe. So I forgot who says it over here, but he says, in Hashem's name is also Yehudi. How? Well, you have the Yod of Yehudi. You have the He of Yehudi. You have the Vav of Yehudi. But Hashem's name has a He in the end. What about the Dalet Yod? Well, if you take the last He, the bottom is a Yod, and the, that is a Dalet, you have a Dalet Yod. That's a Yehudi. That's what it means. At the moment you love your friend like you love yourself, you are, you are acting like God. You are God. Doesn't Hashem want us to be like Him? Didn't we start off the class by saying, Ki kadosh ani Hashem? You shall be holy because I am, I, am, I am God, holy like you. Not holy like you. I am God, holy. You have to be holy like me. Fine. I know I said we're going to finish, uh, but there's something nice over here that I saw. The Sar Shalom of Bel says like this, ואהבתה לרעך כמוך אני השם. נא כמוך זו מרקו ואיו 86. We know that number to be the magical number of אלוקים, which is דין, which is גזרות. He says, you want to switch all the גזרות to the חמים in your life? You want to switch all the darkness and all the hardships and all the problems to חסד, to the חמים, to mercy, to kindness in your life? At the moment, at the moment you love your friend like you love yourself, you switch the kamocha, which is 86, to Ani Hashem, to the 26, to the Rahamim. You got that Moshe? This Moshe. I know there's Moshe behind you. This Moshe. You got it? At the moment you love your friend like you love yourself, you switch the kamocha, which is the 86, the Deen, the Elohim, to Hashem, to Hasid. This is your way out. This is your ticket. This is your ticket to all, the ending of all suffering. And in fact, I'm sorry, I forgot to read you over here. He says like this. He says, Im am Yisrael yesh lahem has v'shom perud. If we have animosity, if we have differences, asher zeh marhika geula. Hashem yishmerenu. This is what stops the Mashiach from coming. I don't tell you something. Mashiach is not going to come because they went into Rafiyah. Mashiach is not going to come because they bombed Aza. Mashiach is not going to come if Ba'adot Hashem, they killed that uh, guy which will be left unnamed. He doesn't even have a chut for us to say it in his class. Mashiach is not going to come if they find the hostages. He's not going to come. So don't get to, Mashiach, it must be Mashiach, 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 Mashiach. Everybody thought Mashiach is going to come in the beginning when they went to Aza. Everybody thought, Mashiach is not going to come unless we, 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 we all united. That's the only way Mashiach will come. Because that's what God wants. Because that what, that's what put us in the Galut in the first place. That's what he says, Hajj Shalom. The Tehilot Aharon says, Ur'e banim lebanecha. If you want, I know the continuation of the Pasuk. Ur'e banim lebanecha. If you want to see children and grandchildren, Shalom al Israel. You have to always run after peace for everybody. Love everybody. Honor everybody. 
And we'll conclude with what the Benish Hai says and a very short story. The Benish Hai says like this Sur We know that Pasuk from Tehilim to mean stay away from the evil and do good. Benish Hai says like this Sur me ra. If you take the mem, me ra. If you take the mem out of the ra, and we know the ra to be the evil incarnation, which his name is Samich Mem Aleph Lamid. That's his name, Samich Mem Aleph Lamid. Says the Benish Hai. If you take the mem, me ra. If you take the mem out of Samich Mem Aleph Lamid, he's left with Samich Aleph Lamid, numerical value 91. That's Hashem's name. If you take the mem out of the Samich Mem Aleph Lamid, you sur mera, if you take it out of the ra, va'asetob, you will do good. What's the Benish Hai trying to tell us? If you take the mem out of stopping to seeing the negative in people, if you learn like the Noam Eli Melech says, halevai, if only we were able to see the good, fine qualities in our friends and the... The deficiency in ourselves, not the other way around. Because unfortunately we see the deficiencies in others and the, the good in us. No. Sur mera. When you stop seeing negative in people, then Hashem reveals Himself to you with the good, with the beracha, with all the yeshuot. We'll conclude with this small story. Shalom Shabadron, Allah Shalom. He says a story about a lady walking in the street. And she says, she says there's commotion. What? There was a child that fell. Everybody's hovering around the child. Everybody's standing around the child. Oh my God, come help, come help. The child needs help. And what does she say? Well, he's probably okay. He's probably scratching himself. What's the big deal? Why do you make such a big deal for? So she gets close to the child. She realizes it's her own son. She says, Moishi, Moishi, what happened to you, Moishi? Somebody tells her, ah, it's probably a small scratch. Okay, not, not, not a big deal, not a big deal. When it's somebody else, eh, it's a big, 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 big deal. I'll get over it. But when it comes to you, whoa, 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 whoa. When it comes to your friend losing money, well, he lost money, big deal. What, do I have to make a big deal about it? I have to go sympathize with him? I have to talk to him? Lend him? Who cares? But when you, all of a sudden, when it comes to you, you come to your friends, why don't you call me? All of a sudden, why don't you call me? Did you hear what happened to me? You heard what happened to me, right? I know you heard what The whole world heard what happened to me. Why don't you call me? You know how I'm upset I am to you? Why all of a sudden? But what, where were you when I needed you? We're so good at that. Where were you when I needed you? That's what the Pasuk is saying. The minute you start loving your friend, or at least honoring every Jew the way you're supposed to honor, or you want honor to yourself, then Ani Hashem. Then this is Judaism. This is what Hashem is all about. This is what the Torah is all about. This is what Am Yisrael is all about. Baruch Hashem, we've been getting together. We've been realizing the situation with the hostages, the situation in Israel. We're starting, to, we're starting to feel a little bit of the pain that they are going through. Wake up call, now wake up call. We needed this, I have no idea. We're starting to feel the pain that they are going through. And all our pains and troubles and problems. Send us Mashiach Sitkenu in the rebuilding of the Beit HaMikdash. Amen.